Hey guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create an AI that will detect objects that moves around in your scene. Also, I'm going to show you how you can make your enemy AI detect your player if that player is within its line of sight. Enough said, let's get into the code. Just so you know, this video is actually a continuation of another video. So there's already some codes already assembled that I did in the other video, such as this enemy script and this player move script. So do, uh, do check out that video uh, just for those references if you need. Currently in the scene, the enemy will follow me or basically go towards me and currently disregard this fallen cube that is there. So I'm going to use this fallen cube as a way to demonstrate how to program a movable obstacle that the enemy will detect. As a recap, I've added a nav mesh um, component, nav mesh agent component to the enemy and I've baked the floor as a fully walkable pad. Again, if you don't remember how to do this, check out the previous video before this one. Now this other cube is going to be a static cube and it's going to be a non-walkable pad. So I'm going to go ahead and bake this so you can see a uh, quick little reminder of how we baked objects that are not movable. This is especially handy for creating like an interior um, walls and you know things things within your game that will definitely not move around. So as you can see now, when I play the game, that area that is uh, completely like a light greenish bluish is completely walkable for the AI, but it will completely avoid the area that I've just baked with this long wall. So it knows that there's an obstacle there. And again, this method is only for objects that you most definitely know will not be moving, such as a wall or a fixed sculpture or something, right? So now, what are we gonna do about the fallen platform? Something that is actually movable. For example, you might have cars in your game or maybe a trash can, stuff like that, right? The answer is actually really, really simple. This object has a rigid body component on it. I'm simply gonna add a nav mesh obstacle to this object and voila. <laughs> like I said, it was it's that simple, it's very easy to do. As you can see right here, you can choose from two different shapes. And I'll just raise the cube a little bit higher and hit play. And as you can see now, when I play and the cube fall in front of him, he does detect it as an obstacle. And you'll see here that he will make his way around the cube. Let me just fix the view. There he goes. Making his way around the cube just to get to me. Now let's look at creating some line of sight detection. As you can obviously know, the enemy AI is actually facing the opposite way from me. So let's open up his script and he should not be able to see me or follow me until I am within his line of sight. So let's look at how that is done. Let's bring the script over. Um, here's a script from the last time we messed with it. Um, just like this, we use in uh, Unity Engine.ai. We're using the NAF mesh agent. We're making a reference right here. And in the update, we're simply telling it to, you know, go to my destination. And that's just happening in the update. So it's going to do that just by, you know, default. Doesn't care who I am, if I'm behind it, in front of it, whatever. It's just going to um, it's just going to go to my position. So let's make some changes uh, real quick. Just so you know, I teach kids for a living. So um, I'm accustomed to explaining things in detail. So if that annoys you, uh, please do forgive me. This is tutorial assuming that you know some Unity or you may not know any at all. All right, so first thing we're gonna need to do is a way for this enemy to detect the player's position. So I'm gonna go up here and create a private vector three. I'll just go ahead and call this uh, target the target's direction, let's just call it, let's do a lowercase t. We'll call it target, D-I-R for target um, direction. Now let's constantly update that target direction and we'll just hop into the update function and say that this target direction um, equal to, and we're gonna get the player 
um, direction, which we've already made a reference for that. You see it's a transform right here. And then we went ahead in the start function and found the player using a tag. So we'll get the player's uh, position. So we just say player dot position, player dot position. And then we will divide, not divide, I'm sorry, we'll subtract the current position of this enemy. So to reference this position, we simply just say transform dot position. It's the equivalent of saying this dot transform that position. Next, we're going to create a uh, temp variable here, which is going to be a float to determine um, the angle of the player currently. So whenever you create a variable within your function, it's a temp variable. So we're going to ahead and create this float. I'm going to call it um, underscore angle, not not angel, underscore angle. And then this underscore angle is going to be the uh, it's going to be a vector three dot angle, and this allows us to give it two type of ang uh, two information here to figure out what angle something is. So we're going to give it the player um, the target direction, right? And then we're also going to give it the this enemy's forward facing. So transform dot forward, just like I did there. Now we're ready to create our if condition where we're going to drop our um, nav set direction into. So we're simply going to say if um, this angle here that we just created. So if the underscore angle is less than or equal to and keep in mind 90 um 90 negative and 90 percent positive not 90 percent. i'm sorry 90 degree is a full um you know if, it, if someone's standing right next to you side of you so we we want it to be in kind of more like a cone like a conal view so we're going to drop it down to about negative 80 and positive 80 oh, actually negative 70 let's do 70. so uh if the direction right is uh, more than or equal to 70 and we also check on this direction of the angle again and see if it's less than or equal to a positive 70 so now it's more like a conal uh, view in front of you if that's the case we're going to go ahead and do this command here and because it's just one command after the if condition uh, you usually don't need the open and close curly bracers but for those of you who are always using the best practice best practice of coding I'm gonna go ahead and hop it and drop it in here anyways for you and just put the code in there all right let's oops delete it there and really that is it so we're just checking our um, forward face and perspective um, uh, 70 degree to the right and 70 degree to the, uh, negative 70 to the left and if the player goes into that line of sight, at that point, he'll follow us. So you can see here, let me uh, fix the view. So you can see that he is not currently following us. He's there, he's waiting, he's patrolling, whatever he needs to do. You know your game, whatever you're doing with your game. And now I'm going to slightly just go in front of him. Let me take the long cut, go around here. Let me zoom out a little bit. And you can see I'm like right next to him. Now when I go up here, boom, I'm in his line of sight and he sees me and now he is chasing me. As you can see, that's it. And our obstacle here still works. He knows it's there. He's gonna go around it. And there he is. And that's it, guys. Um, <laughs> he's, he's gonna push me off the platform. That was it. Um, hope you guys enjoy. If this was ed educational to anyone, um, definitely drop us, drop me a like or a comment. Definitely leave a comment if uh, there's something that uh, wasn't explained in here or something you'd like to see that uh, uh, is not in this video. Otherwise, hit that subscribe button so you can stay tuned for when some cool, interesting content like this one comes out. Until then, see you next time.